Hi, and welcome to Grama in Use. Today we'll take a look at our hungry friend that we find sitting here on a big rock. If you take a look at the words to be or not to be, you know that this session either is about Shakespeare, which it isn't, or about the infinitive, which it is. So welcome to today's session on the infinitive. First, let's take a look at the formation of the infinitive. Obviously, it's not really difficult to do. Just take the base form of a verb and there you are. That's how you can build the infinitive. A bit more interesting for us maybe is the question on what the infinitive is. So let's take a look at, the, at a short definition. First of all, the infinitive is the basic dictionary form of the verb. So when you open a dictionary and search for a verb, you get the infinitive form. That's also the form we're looking at. Interestingly, the infinitive can exist without a subject in a sentence. We'll take a look at a few examples later on. But this is something that separates it from finite forms of the verb, such as verbs in the present tense or the progressive or whatever. Also, the verb is not inflected, which is not surprising because we also talk about the infinitive as a form that is um, a base form. Um, but the interesting thing is it's not inflected for person or tense. So let's take a look at our sentence here. To be or not to be, that's the question. So if we take a look at the to be here, or this to be, we do not get any information about the person who's speaking those lines or the tense that is involved. Contrary to that, let's take a look at this verb sentence here. Peter is a boy. Just by looking at the word is, we get a lot of important information about the speaker. So it's got to be third person singular. And also, it's got to be a sentence in the simple present. This is information that cannot be read out of a simple infinitive sentence such as to be or not to be. So how do we use the infinitive? Typically the infinitive is used similar to the German zu infinitive. So if you follow a few simple, really simple rules, you will be able to spot the infinitive whenever it's needed and you'll be able to use it correctly. One short note, however, the infinitive often appears together with a form or a grammatical form called the gerund. So this is something for you to watch out for. But there's another video on the gerund, so you can just watch that, right? So let's take a look at a set of words that require an infinitive. The infinitive follows after certain adjectives. For example, easy, good, happy, nice, difficult. You are easy to love. The rabbit was difficult to find, and so on. This is the base structure. Also, certain verbs require an infinitive. I decided to study English. I would like to go to school today. I expect you to be on time. Also, the infinitive follows after a set of words such as in order to. I often use the internet to listen to music and so on. We've got the infinitive after certain question words or after question words in sentences such as I asked him how to do it. Also, it follows after it's plus noun or adjective. It's a pleasure to meet you. It's nice to see you and so on. As for the following structures, you have to be a bit more careful and you should be aware of the 
difference between the gerund and the infinitive. The words begin, start, continue, hate, love, like, prefer can be followed by an infinitive, but they can also be followed by a gerund. Keep that in mind. And you have to be especially careful with the following phrases or words here because words stop, go on, forget, remember, mean and try require the gerund or the infinitive but the meaning changes so make sure you know which meaning you want to translate or which meaning you want to convey so much for the infinitive hope to see you soon